Hi guys, it's Udos and welcome to the Udos show. Today I have a very special guest. His name is Alexander Volkanovsky and uh, he's a UFC featherweight champion and he's amazing because he kicks ass basically <laughs> <laughs> and he's the champion at it. So <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. I can't believe I'm talking to a champion right now and he's on my show, featherweight champion ufc so <laughs> super cool thanks, oh, thanks for, for having me i appreciate it i yeah, appreciate so it thank you let's just get into it how hard is it to be like a ufc fighter and like like do all the stuff that you do basically like kicking ass <laughs> yeah well obviously to to be at the top you know what i mean uh, you need to it's a commitment you know what i mean you need to do what you you need to do to put yourself in the best position moving forward so uh, there's a lot of training, uh, obviously, in there and, uh, you know, recovery and all that type of stuff. So there's a lot of hours in the day, uh, just making sure, especially in camp. And when I say in camp, that is, uh, you know, when we're, going, where we're booked uh, to compete, we'll usually have like an eight week training camp to get us prepared for that, uh, uh, for battle or however you, you, you want to say. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty full on, you know what I mean? You've you got to make sure you're, you're doing the work. You've got to make sure you're fit enough and uh, getting the weight off and, and then recovery as well. So there's a lot that goes in it. And then even outside of it, especially at the, at the top and in the UFC, uh, there's a lot of promotion around it. And then, uh, you know, you've got to, you know, marketing and all that type of stuff that you really need to get involved. So it does keep you busy. But at the same time, it's good to be busy. So uh, it's all right. So like, uh, I love this sport, which I'm lucky. I'm blessed uh, to be doing uh, what I love yeah. and I'm good at it. So it's, uh, it's not too bad, but it is, a, it can get difficult. So what made you want to uh, become a UFC fighter to begin with? I've always loved sports. I've always been uh, into sports and I've always loved martial arts. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that was uh, always in me. And it was, uh, you know, it's funny when you, you, you hear people say, oh, I was meant to be this, I was meant to be that. It honestly feels that way. Yeah. Because uh, I've, I've always, always loved it, always had a passion for it. Even when I wasn't training for it, I was visualizing me, myself being a champion and, and all that type of stuff just because I absolutely love the sport. Uh, my, you know, my family, my uncles and, uh, you know, my dad and all that would always talk about, you know, martial arts, whether it was boxing and, uh, you know, wrestling, all that type of stuff. So it was something that, uh, Growing up, I was uh, well aware of and always had a passion for. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I played rugby league, which is a, a very uh, good sport here, uh, like a very popular sport here in uh, Australia, especially where I am. So I played that for a while and, and then I decided to, to give MMA, MMA a crack. And I started at 22 years old, I started MMA. Uh, so that's what I do now in the UFC. So that's the mixed martial arts, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. I started a sport that now I'm a world champion at at 22 years old, but it was a passion I always wanted to do. And then once I started, I was like, yeah, this is it. And I just took it on. That's cool. So like when you became a UFC fighter, what did you notice is like some of the positive and negatives about it? Like what are some of the up and downs of like being a UFC fighter? Well, in the sport itself, you know, there's a, you know, there's weight cutting and things like that, like the diets that you have to do and getting the weight off uh, can be pretty full on. And, you know, you could maybe look at it and say it's not too healthy yeah. uh, in a sense. But, I mean, in the, in the sport itself, especially uh, UFC and being in such a, you know, it's a big platform, but it's not really like uh, most sports where, you know, you, you, you promote, you know, you, you're sort of uh, promoted by the team. You know, you've got a team and they, they, they promote you, they market you and you don't really need to worry too much about that. They've got your, you know, your, your physios, your doctors, your everything you need is all under that roof, under that, that company, under that, uh, under that team, uh, yeah. which in a UFC, it's sort of every man for themselves in a sense. You're obviously going to have a, have a, a team like a, a, a gym that you train at Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, when you're looking at doctors and physios and all that type of stuff, you sort on your own in a sense, because, uh, yeah, it's just it's just not the same. So that can be pretty, pretty difficult. Uh, obviously not now, but coming into the sport. Uh, so it's good to make sure you've got a good team around you that can help with that or a good gym that that, that can sort of uh, maybe help you with that in, in that sense as well. 
but then the marketing and the promote promoting and things like that again that's something that you know we sort of need to 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 do ourselves obviously the ufc is a big platform you go out there do your thing and, and it it can really boost you up and do that but at the same time uh you need to you know sort of really get your character out there and really start to promote yourself you know whether it's going on podcasts and whether you've got your own youtube channel and all that type of stuff which where i'm from like i'm a small town in in australia you know what i mean and uh, the stuff i know now i didn't know even a couple of years ago to be quite honest so i didn't really understand the whole entertainment business and uh you know about marketing and promoting yourself and all that so it was uh, something that i'm really starting to do more now i've got my own cooking uh channel uh cooking show i've got uh, my youtube channel and things like that i'm really starting to build it all up and really get this whole entertainment business it, it took a while it took a while but I, i'm finally there again it, it's just a uh, as i always say i'm just a regular bloke from a small town so what i know now is a lot more than what i knew you know a, a few years ago so i'm still learning and, and and catching on to that but as i said it's sort of every man for themselves in a sense as yeah. you know it's I don't want to knock on the sport like that because it, it's it's sort of fine. Yeah, I guess that's boxing. That that's a, a lot of these types of sports would be the same. But uh, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a, a good team around me, and uh, we all got the same goal, and and it works well. But I mean, you sort of need to find yourself and find you know where you should be and what what will work and things like that. So it can get pretty difficult. But once you get your formula, you're all good. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say like. Oh, it's getting like you know a punch or something, and then healing from it or something. You're like, oh, the marketing, and you know, like it's like nothing, getting injured or anything like that. You know, have you had any like well, major? I actually, I have, but to be honest, it's funny you say that, like, because uh, uh, you know, getting prepared for the fight, uh, and I always say fighting's the easy part. And a lot of people will be like, wow, you know, you're getting punched in the face. How is that easy? You know what I mean? You're, you're <laughs> yeah. faced with another man that wants to that wants to put a beating on you. How are you okay with that? But I mean, it's, I'll be honest, you know, it doesn't really hurt. You don't really uh, worry about it too much while you're in there. Uh, obviously, losing will hurt. You know, you, you're more worried about losing rather than uh, getting punched or, or kicked or anything like that. So it's it's not too bad, but and when I say the marketing, I actually enjoy it. I love prom- uh, the promotion and, and marketing, and I love all that. I just yeah. didn't get it. I'm just saying that uh, having to sort of figure that out, you know what I mean, and uh, you know, being in an area where, yeah, again, I don't have access to to not only that knowledge, but to a lot of what uh, you know these big cities and these big gyms might have uh, elsewhere, if that makes sense. Yeah, because you're in Australia, right? So yes, it's, yeah, uh, Australia. So yeah, it's crazy because it's so different from like being here in the US and like the UFC and everything is here. So you have to come here, right, for like all of that every every single mm-hmm. time. Yeah, well, like uh, the UFC actually have a UFC UFC. Uh, performance institute which when you're in vegas you can go visit they've got the physios they've got the doctors and you have all that access yeah but being in australia you know you could obviously make a phone call and all that but i mean it is better to have your team that's going to look after you You know well i can't when i got an injury i can't fly to vegas to go check it out so i need to uh... (laughs) you know make sure i've got a good team here but you know I've, i've obviously built that up and um you know, it's uh, it's definitely uh, everything we, we've got it there. But I mean, it was it was a little difficult to sort of understand that, even with your nutritionist and all that type of stuff, and then understanding recovery. And you know, I had no idea, and I didn't have the money to be able to find out that information or, or have someone on my team that could give me that information. Yeah. So it's it's pretty difficult in a sense where you know I'm like I could talk about the the weight cutting as I told you that was a, a hard that is a hard part of what we do and I'll give you a little example yes. so um you will probably be blown away by this but you know when you weight cut I've done even bigger cuts than this uh, I've uh, say like right now I'm I'm 76 kilograms which is what is that 168 yeah maybe 168 pounds and I need to get to 145 yeah pounds and I need to do that in six weeks which is seems like you know might be a bit but I'll be a week out um, a week out from the weigh-in, yeah, I'll be about all right, seventy-three kilograms. Now, what would that be? One, um, 
maybe 160, 162, 163. I'm guessing something like that. Yeah. And then, uh, yes, I'll need to lose 163. I'll get 163 or 165, whatever it is, down to 145 in the week. So, uh, you know, so a lot of people will be, you know, blown out about that. And I've done much worse. So I've actually done a a worse cuts than that. Now I've got the, that's actually me figuring it out. Um, But it still can be a little excessive, uh, especially for people that might not understand what what goes into it. But I'll uh, I'll end up sweating anywhere from uh, 10 pounds. I'll probably have to do 10 pounds of sweating overnight to get rid of the rest of the the weight. Um, So I'll do that the morning of or the night before the morning of weigh in and then I'll end up walking back out to the uh, arena to the octagon at about 170 oh, yeah 168 maybe yeah you know, 165 so with the 24 <laughs> hours so that's it's crazy you you see the weight just go um, it's harder obviously I could tell that story a bit better if I could say it in kilograms because I know I know yeah. kilograms but no I totally but I'm trying to give you uh, give you an understanding I, I kind of seen the whole like process of like sweating right before on the, those like sauna beds or whatever. And mm-hmm. then you just like lay there and just sweating and sweating. You can barely even drink or eat or anything. Right. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. I seen how intense it is, but yeah, I, it's so funny. Cause when you talk about like injuries and stuff, when, you know, somebody's like, Oh, they might like hit you or something like, not that I'm getting hit, but <laughs> you get my point like if somebody was to hit me i would have been like anticipating the hitting already and already like thinking (laughs) about the the like how much it's gonna hurt (laughs) and you're like oh yeah like i don't feel it at all like i'm like how are you not feeling it you know but it's so crazy like i guess your adrenaline like it's so boosted when you're in there and you don't even think about the the hitting part it's just kind of like just go and win you know so that makes sense. So what is the craziest thing that like yeah. ever happened to you in the UFC? Craziest thing that's ever happened to me in the UFC. Yeah, like or fighting well, or you get, you, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you get you get a obviously there's a, there's a, there's a lot of stories. Um one that uh man, like it's it's it depends how you want to look at it. I could tell you stories where things would be unfortunate where you have to miss out on fights, which is always pretty detrimental to to what you need to do again i, I do this uh sport this is my career you know pop this is this is how i look after my family yeah uh, my kids and i put a lot of uh, time money and effort into camps and when you can't turn up to a fight because of an injury or something uh, that that's uh, gone wrong it's uh always uh you know very hard especially when you've been away from your family to, to go and do that so that'll probably be the, the the worst one for me was when i was meant to uh, uh, fight Ortega the first time uh, we went there I was put a lot of effort in prepared obviously spent a lot a lot of money in camp uh, went there two weeks earlier just to to uh, adjust to the time zone and I ended up getting a uh, COVID which they had to pull pull me off um, the card and um, which was devastating because again like uh, you know you're at the time when I when I heard that I was like well there's not much uh, wrong with me but um yeah, but I was training really hard uh, while I was over there. Got it, and then I ended up getting pretty cro- crook anyway. So I ended up in hospital and missed out on the opportunity, which I was uh, definitely uh, upset about. And it was funny because I ended up uh, there's a, there's a TV show called uh, The Ultimate Fighter, and I've always been a massive fan. I've watched it even before I was even doing this sport. I used to love watching it, and I guess even though this was uh, one of the craziest or uh, and worst parts of my career and the fact that I had to miss out on a, a big opportunity, you know, obviously a paycheck and all that type of stuff, spend time away from the family. I, I had the opportunity to be a coach on a, on a reality uh, TV show over there. So it sort of turned around, but it meant that I had to be away from the family for, it ended up being like three months all, all together, which was uh, pretty crazy because it all just happened so, so quick. Because one day I was waiting until I, I was cleared to go home. And then they said, wait a second, you're not going home. You're going to be a coach on Ultimate Fighter. So it was just, uh, it's just funny how, how crazy. I always talk about this, this sport being a roller coaster. Yeah. I always talk about that with emotions and then things that are happening. It's just crazy. The highs and lows, when I talk about weight cuts, obviously going competing, winning and, and whatnot, then being put in hospitals and, and whatnot from 
uh, th- uh, you know, infections or whatever it is. I could tell you a lot of stories. But yeah. for that to happen, obviously be down on, on such a low and then to be, uh, to hear that you're going to be on a, on a, you know, reality show and, you know, be able to build the fight up and then sort of, you know, you, yeah, we, we sort of put ourselves in a position where this fight that we're going to have, where we had to cancel and pull out from, I get to do this a few months later and it's going to be much bigger. We'll be main event. We'll be, uh, you know, we've done, done like, a, you know, 10 or 12 episodes of reality TV to build the fight up and all that type of stuff. We end up building animosity uh, towards each other. So it ended up uh, just adding to that story. So it went from one of the worst um, parts of my career to almost one of the, 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 the best. But uh, in saying that, obviously being away from the family was definitely tough, but sometimes we need to do, do these things. So that'll probably be uh, one of the craziest just because so much happened. And yeah. uh, again, we probably don't have enough time to really get into all the details, but but yeah, there's, there's been plenty that that's happened. Uh, but yeah, that's probably one of them, just purely because it's a good example of this crazy sport that we're in, the highs and lows. And, uh, and that's maybe a little bit of an example so people can understand and yeah, it can get much worse and it can get much better as well. Yeah. So like as far as, you know, you give an advice if somebody wants to become a UFC fighter, uh, what's your advice? And like, is it something you recommend? Do you think that everybody should get into this or like what what are your takes on it now that you have the experience and you've been a winner and a champion and you had your highs and your lows and everything? Mm hmm. So what do you think, like, uh, what are the advice for, like, whoever wants to become a fighter? Do you think that this is something they should do? Or is it like, now that you know, you're just like, ah, it's not really what I thought it was, you know, or, you know, there's always, you know, people, they always change their minds about certain things. Like, even me, like, mm-hmm. I've done certain things. And then later on, I'm like, oh, I thought it was going to be like this. And then I'm like, it's not as cracked up as I thought it was going to be. And, you know, you know, you just kind of <laughs> don't know what to expect unless you're there and you already kind of accomplished it, you know? Yeah, well, um, it's funny because obviously I'm talking about the highs and lows. I'm talking about, you know, it ain't easy. Yeah. It's, uh, sport isn't easy. If you think this is going to be a walk in the park, you've got it all wrong. But... That doesn't mean it's bad. You know, I think uh, the, the times that, you know, we talk about character building and, uh, you know, go, uh, learning uh, good life skills, mm-hmm. uh, you learn from adversities. You, you learn from hardship and being put in these sort of uh, uncomfortable positions and how you get out of them um, can really uh, make you stronger. And I truly do believe that. Like going through this sport, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, going through – even being in the training room and being put in uncomfortable positions and and accepting uncomfortable positions. You talk about all these, you know, phrases that people talk about MMA. It can cover a lot of that. It really does. You know, where there's going to be a lot of adversity. There's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of character building in this sport. That's definitely, that's one thing for sure, but I definitely believe it can make you stronger and uh, prepare you for some of the crazy things that that will happen in life that uh, we know, is going to happen. You know, life isn't always easy, um, yeah. you know, but, you know, you want to be able to control uh, the chaos that happens around you and all that, and, you know, be in a good uh, headspace and be able to keep yourself composed and comfortable in this uncomfortable position, as we say. So I believe that, uh, you know, that's something that people did want to, even the kids, I'm a, I'm a big believer of uh, kids uh, doing mixed martial arts. When you talk about discipline, resilience, uh, you know, uh, durability, uh, like all, all, all that type of stuff, all this stuff that can really, you know, make you stronger, prepare you a little bit for, for, for yeah. life and the world. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that because yeah. it's all about respect, like, you know, discipline, honor, all that type of stuff. And, um, and I'm, I'm a big believer in that. So I might talk about things and say, yeah, it ain't easy and talk about stuff that might think I'm being very negative to the sport, which I'm not. Um, but again, there's a lot of times, that's where you learn most from, you yeah. know, is uh, that uh, them adversities and them uh, uncomfortable uh, feelings. Well, that, that kind of makes sense because if this is somebody's dream, they're really not going to understand on the, unless they actually pursue it and see all of the ups and downs with their own eyes. I mean, they could always like take the advice from other people. Right. But 
it's one thing to take the advice or like listen to somebody saying something and then actually doing it themselves, right? So I think it's, if it's your dream, then I think you should go for it and experience it. It's the best way to learn. And then, you know, you might change your mind later. You might change your mind halfway or, you know, after you're a UFC champion or whatever, or you might really enjoy it and keep going, you know, until you can't go anymore. <laughs> you know, so it's like, depends on whatever mm. you are like, because I think um, what is the like normal lifespan of like a UFC fighter? Like at what age are you kind of like, OK, I should kind of like not do this and do something else? Well, uh, it's a good question because, uh, you know, that's why we talk about, like, again, what I know now uh, to what I would have known uh, even just a few years ago. But yeah. we're not in this sport for a very long time. Like, yeah. uh, let's be real. You want to be, you're going to be at your peak um, for a short amount of time. So people uh, might, might see that, yeah, there, there is money in UFC, but it is for a short amount of time. You're at a big platform. You need to capitalize on, on, on this time that you're, you're, you're in this sport, that's when you talk about marketing promotion and all that type of stuff, which yeah. I've always been a competitor and I've always, I always got that side of things, but I didn't get the rest of it. Where now, you know, again, I want to look after my family. I don't want to just look after my family. Now I want to look after my family for the rest of my life. Of and, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, how many more years do I have in this sport, especially uh, at the top? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, there's maybe, you know, a few more years or something like that. So when you look at it that way, it's not too much, but can I capitalize on uh, them few years right now while I'm in it? You know, uh, whether I'm staying active and, and fighting more and getting good paychecks and, and building that platform, uh, whether it's getting a YouTube channel, uh, cooking shows, uh, you know, all that type of stuff. And then obviously investing in the right thing. So capitalizing on the opportunity I have now, especially on such a big platform, uh, is uh, very important because, yeah, as you said, the real question is how long are you in this sport for? Not very long. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, you know, some people do start it early, uh, which, uh, you know, some people are in the UFC at, at 20 years old, 22 years old. I didn't even start MMA till I was 22 years old, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's where I started very late. And then I was at the top uh, later in, in your career sort of uh, peak. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, I think uh, anywhere from around 22, say in the UFC, uh, the average numbers would usually be 22 to 34, 35 years old is okay. probably, uh, you know, uh, where you're, you're still pretty com competitive. You, don't get me wrong. There's a champion in the UFC right now who's 40 years old. Yeah. Uh, so and he didn't get the belt till he was uh, 40 years old, which is uh, pretty crazy. But that's cool, you know, obviously. Yeah. So it's yeah. good to see because I could be like, oh, maybe I can capitalize on this sport. A few more years then, so yeah. that, that'll be okay. But, you know, I, I definitely, uh, all I can really give you that answer is, uh, you know, you're not in this sport for a very long time, but that's why we need to capitalize on the, the platform we have and, and the time we have in this sport. That's that's amazing that you're doing all that. So, like, what are some of the things that you're working on now? I heard that you said, like, a YouTube channel, and like, where can everybody find you and all that good stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, on my YouTube channel, like uh, obviously I have a, a lot of things. I've got a couple of different segments and one of them is my cook, cooking show. So I do a cooking with bulk, it's called. Uh, so I've got that on my Instagram and my YouTube channel. It's something I love cooking. I love cooking. So I, I get right <laughs> in there. We have a bit of fun with it. So uh, yeah, it's uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. It's pretty easy to find on the YouTube. And my um, Alex, uh, at Alex Volkanovsky is my Instagram. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. But yeah, it's good fun. Go check it out if you want. And uh have a laugh and see if I can uh, show you some good, cool uh, meals or <laughs> we'll see what yeah. we uh, see what we can uh, bring forward to you. Well, send me the links and then I'll put them in the description too. So like everybody could go and just click on the links, uh, you know, directly and makes it easier, but I want to see your cooking show. Are you, what kind of foods are you cooking? Oh man, look, I, I do love my, my barbecues. I love a good uh, barbecue. So uh, I don't mind, uh, I love cooking steaks and, and things like that. So chicken wings, and it's usually barbecue mostly. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we do, uh, we obviously do uh, a, a few different uh, varieties as well. So I like to go out there and uh, try new things, whether it's, you know, I'm going to start, you know, doing like a really yeah, chilly, really very hot type of stuff. I like, can have a bit of fun with it as well. So uh, uh, then I might do other 
cooks, I might get some of the, or chefs, I might get some of their meals and try their meals and, and things like that. So we're going to have a, a bit of fun with it. Or obviously, because of what I do, I need a diet. Yeah. I sometimes have like, you know, your your diet meals and meals that I need to use uh, while I'm in camp and preparing for a fight. So again, there's a, there's a bit of variety there. Yeah, you should do like two roasted chickens and like one is like rear naked choking the other one or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. I yeah. might have to do that. I'm going to take, I'm going to yeah. take that. You don't mind me taking that, do you? <laughs> yeah, just go ahead. I mean, make it about like UFC and like the cooking. It will be funny, you know? You just like do all these random things yeah. while you're doing it and like maybe like make a cake and like make it all crazy, <laughs> you know? I have a crazy mind, so good my idea. mind is always like thinking about Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, so but I won't hold you up anymore. Um, thank you for joining me today and thanks for doing the show. If you ever need anything, let me know. And you know, I'm always here. So I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy training and cooking schedule mm -hmm. and the kids and the family and you know, all that good stuff. So <laughs> thank you for doing this. And everybody no go worries. follow him. Thank you. And and check him out. Check out his cooking show. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye-bye.